cold plunge that, we're, that I do, um, or that we do. And so I, I, I've, um, I'm changing out the water, and I change out the water probably every three to four weeks where I'm at in California now. When I, where I was at in Oregon, we had well water, and that water would get bad every two weeks, or less than two weeks, because there's no chemicals, there's nothing, go, it's not going through a water treatment facility, it's coming straight from, from a well. Um, that said, there's, you know, you can smell the chlorine in it, so the water will last longer. Um, so I've cleaned it out, and <clears throat> if you come in, you take a look, you can see what the silicone, so I've siliconed um, or caulked a lot of the sides, the seams. Um, nonetheless, there's still a little bit of rust because this is actual metal. Um, you can see where there's been a scrape on the side um, that's come through, so there's a little bit of rust. But um, I usually will empty this out and then draw, I, I spray it, clean it out, make it clean, and then I will fill it back up. When we fill this back up, it takes about 10 minutes. That said, everybody also wants to understand the, like, the size of this, uh, this freezer, right? It's a chest freezer. So the inside of this is roughly 20 inches wide. The outside of it is roughly 27 and a half inches, okay? The length is 61 and a half long on the outside, and on the inside, we are 54 inches. The depth is 28 inches, okay? So, when I fill this, I go six inches below the surface of this. Um, because your body mass will will fill, will bring that water up, right? So that changes things. The other key component that you are going to want to understand is you will see wood down here. I have this propped up at an angle. The angle is makes it very easy for the drain at the bottom. Uh, if you're going to actually invest in one of these, get one with a drain. Um, that way you're not using a hose to do that. Um, but this just simply plugs, and most chest freezers come with these because you're supposed to, uh, you know, unfreeze these things and get all the ice out of them from time to time so they just don't accumulate a lot of ice. Um, coming over here, this is our timer. You can get these for like two bucks, <laughs> something like that, uh, Amazon or wherever you want to go. I set this so when we fill this up, I will run, I will not run the timer. This will run for about 24 to 36 hours straight. Uh, in 24 to 36, it roughly will get to about 32 to 34 degrees. From there, I set it on about two hours. Yeah, I've got it from 10 p.m. until midnight. So from 10 p.m. till midnight, this runs every day for two hours and that's all it needs once that water is about 32 to 35 degrees. And for some of you, you may need to adjust it, especially time of year. Um, definitely when, I was in, when we were in uh, Oregon uh, in the winter, it can get up to negative 20. Uh, you don't even need to run it when it's that cold uh, as it'll keep it cold. Um, but nonetheless, cold mornings, cold nights will actually keep the water colder, obviously. Um, so. That timer will run for two hours for me. Uh, I know people that run it for like 90 minutes uh, a day, um, but some you may need to adjust it to even three hours a day for depending upon temperature and all that. But you'll find your sweet spot. You should have a thermometer, one of the electrical ones that you're not electrical, it's a digital one you can stick into the tub. Or if you have a fancy setup, um, you, you know, that instantly tells you what's going on, you'll know the adjustments you need to make based on it each day or each morning you're going to use it. Um, so simply put, um, the best way I've found is to fill this up, which takes about 10 minutes, leave it about six inches from the top. I usually get about anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds of Epsom salt that I will dump in here as well, which allows the water to actually get colder and without freezing over as much. Um, and then B, it, you're getting a lot of the magnesium and a lot of benefits of the Epsom salts as you get into the tub as well. Um, and then you'll just shut the lid and let it do its thing 
and daily get in there when or however often you want to get in and uh, you've got a pretty badass setup that um, doesn't uh, waste a lot of water um, where we where we used to um, waste a ton of water when we want to do ice baths hence we would only probably do them three or four days a week I can do this daily we can run multiple people through here um, and this water stays pretty damn cold uh, there's a, there you will find there is a very large difference from making an ice bath with actual ice in it versus being in a tub of water that is at 32 to 35 degrees or so um, it's just there's a remarkable difference that's occurring within that um, and I've yet to find anything as cold as this thing other than a running 36 degree glacial water um, river so <laughs> Um, which I've been in and is freaking cold because it's like wind um, Anyway, that's that's the setup. I keep it clean um, You know, I just I just watch the water when the water starts to change color too much um, You know, and I obviously I've got a hose out here as well you, you make sure that you clean off before you go in especially if you're going in the sauna Don't just jump in to the water. You're gonna actually get the water dirty. It's gonna go bad sooner so you know you want to keep that clean so keep yourself hosed off and uh, if you're gonna have guests make sure they're hosing off as well